Hi everyone, this is Minister Margaret Rose or Margaret Rose Coles Latigue with In or Out Ministries. Um, first of all, let me just introduce the ministry. It You could um, find out more about the ministry, uh, my vision and mission and everything else on the website www.innerautministries.com. Um, of course, I do have a Facebook page, Inner Out Ministries, an Instagram page, very, very important, um, YouTube, um, the YouTube channel, that's where I have all my teachings. Um, so you want to go to Inner Out Ministries or you could use my name, Minister Margaret Rose Coles Lartig. I know it's a long name or Minister Margaret Rose, or just Margaret Rose, you should be able to find my videos. You want to subscribe and click the bell, so anytime I have a new teaching, you'll be able to get a notification. Okay, now I also want to, before I start, and of course, this is the Back to Basics teaching, this new um, edition that I have, um, where we'll be learning foundational classes, you know, um, the Bible says, Jesus says, on this rock, I will build my church. And he was talking to Peter, but some some doctrines have it, uh, meaning that, that, that Peter is the rock, but Peter is actually not the rock. When Jesus t told Peter, on this rock, I will build my church, it means the rock of the word of God, which is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, of course, we're on the third third teaching of the back to basic series and uh, the first one i started with the godhead the trinity which is just perfect and then everything will flow from that um i started with god the first teaching lesson one is about god lesson two the second person of the trinity which is jesus the son and this evening i am going to be talking about um, or sharing on the holy spirit which is the third person of the trinity now before I get into the teaching, I just want to let you know that in our old ministry, we also have what is called the Word of Knowledge Bible Study that started a year and a half ago in April of 2019. Word of Knowledge Bible Study is different from this series, from the, different from the Back to Basic series. The Back to Basic series is based on a teaching called Kingdom Character by Bishop Tony Owens. And you could go to www.tonyowensministries.com and you will see the Kingdom Character series. There are four books to that series, Discipleship 1, 2, 3, and 4. I'm teaching from the Discipleship Book 1. Now, I've sent out many of these books, maybe 30 to 50 books. I can't remember the count. And uh, many of you have these books already. Please take it off from the shelf, blow up the dust, and open it up. Um, I know we are, you know, we're all bogged down with working and so many things to do. We don't have time to read and we also have to read our Bible, the actual Bible. But I'm making it easier for you where I'm going to be teaching these um, very, very important um, um, foundational teachings. Um, so where you, and also I'll have it, uh, the way I'm setting it up is via audio, um, where you could, you have the whole week or you could listen to it whenever you wish. But the, I'll tell you what, these teachings have, have um, I mean, assisted in where I am today spiritually um, with wisdom, revelation, knowledge, and understanding of the word. I have, I grew so quickly in the word because of these teachings. Um, Bishop Tony Owens is an excellent, excellent apostolic teacher. And so, yes, so word of knowledge every Thursday evening via Zoom at 8 30 p.m it never fails every thursday at 8 30 p.m i'm teaching on prayer we are teaching on prayer we've been on that topic for a couple of weeks now so you're always welcome to join in um i have the link on instagram on my facebook page um you can inbox me and i can definitely send you that link okay so um Yes, I also want to acknowledge um, some people here who assisted me in, in, in making this Back to Basics um, uh, production possible. Um, I don't have any fancy equipment. I'm just doing this here on my iPhone and it can get a little tedious. 
So I want to thank um, Lisa Bertrand, um, who, my cousin, who has helped me um, with the production. Uh, my little niece, Ty Johnston, very, very good at the iPhone and Apple. I call her my little Apple techie, my iPhone techie. So Ty helps me out anytime I want to figure out something on this iPhone. She's always willing and has such patience to help me out. You know, that younger generation, they're so wise when it comes to technology. Um, Claude Michel, uh, Minister Claude Michel for his anointed music, such an anointed musician and pianist. Um, all my background music is done by Claude. These are all his original um, tunes that his or rhythms, as he said, that he's put together. God is just awesome. And of course, this beautiful photography by Gibson Blah. You know, I try to use people that I know, you know, that are so talented. I just love it. Um, you know, God gives us those talents, you know, and he gives us those talents to use for his kingdom. That's it. It's all about kingdom. And um, so um, Gibson Blah has done um, the, the main images on the on the, the the videos that i'm putting out this one has a bird a beautiful bird and this background the, the, the photography is spectacular so you know um so precise you know if that's the word i should say um he also did my logo the in or out ministries logo so here you go and of course this whole series is dedicated to the delver family from fort lauderdale um, they press their way um, to be baptized with all what's going on in the world. They, 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 I mean, they totally press their way to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. You're talking about a family of about 11, including the children. So I was just so moved by this. And it's also a way to... to, to um, to to because once you get baptized you, you we shouldn't just just you know leave because you're basically a baby in the word so um you have to be nurtured and you know nurtured and and taken care of and loved on and and taught and trained up so um this way they can be able to get the basic or foundational teachings that is needed to to get them real study and study and um and well rooted and planted in the word hallelujah um second timothy 3 16 and 17 says all scriptures in god all scriptures are god breathed and is useful for teaching rebuking correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of god may be thoroughly equipped in every good word work Hallelujah, hallelujah. Proverbs 1 7 says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, but with all thy getting, get understanding. You know, so many people think they just know it all, but you have to get an understanding. And where do you get it from? You get it from the Holy Spirit. That's where you get your understanding. 2 Timothy 2 15 says, To study, to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Hallelujah. And I just wanted to mention here, Matthew 24 35 says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will never pass away. That's what, that's what God says. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. So the word is what we need. The word is the chief cornerstone. The word is the rock that we need to stand on. So um, I'm just grateful that God can actually use me, you know, to share his word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So let's get into the teaching um, of the Holy Spirit, which is the third person in the Trinity. So who is the Holy Spirit? Then I add that then, sorry, the first thing that you need to understand is that the Holy Spirit is a person. He is the third person of the Trinity. So in equality with God the Father and God the Son, Jesus Christ, He is the empowering portion of the Trinity. He is omnipresent everywhere at the same time. He is omnipotent, which means He is all-powerful, and He is omni omniscient, 
which means he knows everything. Trust me, the Holy Spirit knows everything. There is nothing that you can hide from the Holy Spirit. The Bible said he searches the deep, 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 the deep, the depth of our hearts. Whatever you've locked away and you put back, you know, you, 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 you can't even remember it. You can't even come to the forefront of your mind. God knows the deep, our very deep secrets. Hallelujah. So in Genesis 1 and 2, we see the Spirit of God moving across the face of the waters. In verse 3, we see the Trinity in action in that God the Father spoke the word. Genesis, sorry, spoke the word. And Jesus, who is God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, em empowered the word to bring it to pass or manifest it. Luke 4 and 18 also shows this in that God the Father is the anointer the one who is anointing, God the Son is the one being anointed, and the Holy Spirit is the anointed itself. So in Genesis, it was God's will. The, the word became, the will of God became word, and the Holy Spirit moved over the world, and there was creation. It's just fantastic. So, and, and basically what I'm doing is I'm just touching on each and each and every one of these topics here, you know, and I, and as I go along, more will be revealed because trust me, the Holy Spirit will be revealed. Um, Jesus will be revealed. Jesus is a word. That's it. <laughs> Jesus is the whole Bible, the whole word. And of course, God will be revealed. So the more, the more, the more that I teach on the word, the more everything will come out. But I will just be touching, you know, touching a little bit on everything. I, of course, the Bible is so in-depth. I cannot, you know, go too much in-depth on a topic. Um, but I believe more and more will be revealed as we move through the different topics here in these basic um, foundational classes. So, there are five symbols of the Holy Spirit. A, water. It is symbolic of God's refreshing power, life, and cleansing. Fire. Fire is symbolic of the refining of God. Fire can burn away things that are no good. A dove. The dove is symbolic of peace, and in this case, the peace of God. Oil. Oil is often used for healing as well as anointing for service. Wind. Wind is symbolic of the breath or pneuma of God and his unseen power. For example, when the wind blows, you cannot see it, but you may feel its power and its effects. The Holy Spirit is one in the Trinity, the Godhead, that is presently here with us. So he's right here with me doing this teaching and he's right there with you at the receiving end of this teaching. He's everywhere at the same time. When Jesus left, he, the Holy Spirit, came. So Jesus left and he said he will give us a comforter and it was the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, John 16 and 7. The work that the Holy Spirit presently does is described in John 16, 8 and 11. Just a moment. John 16, 8 and 11. I'm going to go to my... John 16, 8 and 11. I'm going to go to my new King James Version here. Just bear with me. 16, 8 and 11. Okay, and it reads, And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. So he will convict them of sin because they do not believe in him. He will convict them of righteousness because he goes to his father and you see me no more. And then he will convict the world of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. And who is the ruler of this world? Guess what? The little G-God, Satan. He's the ruler of this world and the prince of the power of the air above this planet here. But he will be judged. Okay? So the Comforter, the Holy Spirit is a, is a further demonstration of God the Father's love to dwell in, to comfort and help his children, as well as to testify of Jesus Christ. You know, when we get saved, the Bible said no pastor, no bishop, no apostle, no 
no prophet, no priest can say they have saved you. Do you know it's a Holy Spirit that saves you? He activates like a measure of faith that, that has been placed in each and every one of us. And that that is who saves us. I remember when I when I stood up to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I just felt myself lifting up from the seat. I I, I don't even think I, I got myself up. My heart was so the the the, the 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 pastor preached and it just whatever he preached just pierced my heart and I just felt my body lift up to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. It is just so whenever you feel somebody is pushing you, it's it's not the right time. Don't let I have seen pastors force people to to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior because they put a guilt trip on them. That is not the Holy Spirit. That is not the Holy Spirit. That's why many fall away. They, they get baptized under pressure and that's why they fall away. And that is wrong. And the fivefold ministry have to repent for doing this. This is wrong. Anyway, let's keep going. The Greek use used the word parakletos for Holy Spirit, which means someone called alongside to help. So when you say when you when you refer to the Holy Spirit, you can say my helper or my comforter. Some people get scared Holy Spirit. They just think, oh, you know, I'm not good enough to say Holy Spirit. But you know what? He's just our helper. So no matter what you're going through. No matter how bad it seems, God sent you a helper and a comforter. Hallelujah. So you should hunger for more of the Holy Spirit to help you effectively do more of the work of the Lord. I couldn't do this without the Holy Spirit. And many times I prayed, I said, Father, I cannot do this alone. I cannot do this. And I am not doing this alone. I am not. No, if, if it is not your will, and if you don't help me, I'm not doing this. No, you know. So we want to pray um, for the Holy Spirit, our help, our comforter to help us to be more effective in the kingdom of God. So the Holy Spirit knows the will of God for your life and makes intercession or pleads for you. Um, to God to keep you in God's will. So he pleads for you to God. He pleads to God to keep you in God's will. Isn't that fantastic? Romans 8.26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know, no, we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. The Holy Spirit often prays or makes intercession through our prayers or leading us in prayer. This includes praying in the Spirit. Many times when I start to pray, I don't think of what I'm going to pray for. I might know that I have to pray for a certain person because they're going through that. But certain things just pop up in my head to cover. And that's strictly the leading of the Holy Spirit. Or when I just pray, um, certain people come into my head. And I start praying for them for whatever it is, you know, that's the leading of the Holy Spirit. Or definitely praying in tongues. The thing is, we don't have, our mind cannot comprehend what our mouth is saying. So you're not praying, praying out of your, your personal will, you know, I need a house, I need a car, I need money, I need this, I need that. No, 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 no. When we pray in tongues, the only the Holy Spirit knows what you're praying for and he's the one directing your prayer because you're actually speaking with his heavenly language so the holy spirit helps us to pray but you have to be in god's will for that to happen you know you cannot be in the flesh for that to happen you have to live a holy and a righteous life you know and try to live a holy and righteous life and I will be covering those. I'm covering holiness and righteousness also. It's not what we think it is. Okay, so the Holy Spirit speaks to us. The Holy Spirit is often speaking to us, but we are not always listening, brethren. We have to listen. Some of us talk too much. Maybe I do too. Pray, 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 pray. Some people just pray, 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 and they never stop to listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. 
because it's a two-way street it's a relationship now what's a relationship you give and you receive you see what i'm saying but if you just talk 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 then it's too much noise you cannot hear what god is talk, saying back to you so um my quiet time is in the mornings in the mornings i normally don't put on any music i cannot do praise music i cannot i just sit quietly you know i pray quietly and i listen a lot of a lot of it is quietness and listening and that's when the holy that's when i got this this um this word to start this back to basic back to basics just popped in my head one morning back to basics back to basics i was just meditating and that's the holy spirit put that in me or my helper or my comforter you know my helper okay so um we 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 want we, he wants to direct us or counsel us protect us and more but we must be willing to hear what the spirit is saying acts 8 29 gives us an example of this and it reads then the spirit said to philip go near and join thyself to this chariot that's in um, Acts 8 and 29. So that is a story. I don't know if you have known about that story. When um, Philip um, went, um, the Holy Spirit told him to go to, 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 to meet this Ethiopian Enoch that was traveling through the, the desert, I think, and was going somewhere. He was going to do um, some sort of, uh, he was going to do something for his queen, the Queen of Sheba, um, and um, he, he was studying the book of Isaiah because in those days, all they had was the, the Pentateuch, is it called? Or the, the older books from the Old Testament. So he was studying that and the Holy Spirit spoke to Philip to tell him to go meet this, this Ethiopian Enoch. And um, Philip ended up baptizing the Enoch right there in the desert because the Enoch, um, the, the, the eunuch or Enoch, whichever way you want to say it, the eunuch, the Ethiopian eunuch, received Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior and, and Spirit baptized him. So that's fantastic. That's listening. And also in Acts 10, 19, while Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men seek thee. So I think that's when Peter was at... Um, no, that was when Peter had gone to the shore, to the, let's say, to is the Sea of Galilee, or he went home or something. I think that's Jesus Christ had died after some time. And then there was so much conflict going on with, with, um, um, with the gospel of Jesus Christ and the fact that Jesus died on the cross and all of a sudden. But there was this, there was this um, man called uh, Cornelius. He was a Greek or a, a Gentile, I think they call him Cornelius, but he 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 sent for Peter because I think the Holy Spirit said, um, the Holy Spirit told Peter that three men were looking for him. I think that's the men that Cornelius sent to look for Peter and for Peter to come back to his household. And Peter ended up, um, they all got saved. Cornelius and his whole household got saved. So that's in um, Acts 10 and 19. Um, also, Revelation 2 and 7 show this fact. It says Revelation 2 and 7. Let's go to Revelation 2 and 7 where the Holy Spirit speaks. Um, Revelation 2 and 7. And he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Hallelujah. So that is just perfect. That's right there in Revelation. That is meant for us. Um, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord has said to the churches. You know, that that um, Jesus said that in for the four churches, there's the, um, the all the different... I don't want to get into Revelations now. I actually have a teaching on it, on Revelations. Uh, what's the name of it? I can't remember which was the name of that teaching, but I, I, I broke down the four churches, etc. But at every time, and who is a church? The church is us. All these four different churches are different types of the, the, the categories of the church groups. You know, the lukewarm church, which we are in right now, um, the persecuted church, the compromising church, um, church of the Pergamos, the F Ephesus, the, um, Smyrna, um, so Pergamos, um, Thyatira, 
So he, in every single, every time he was addressing the different types of churches, he said, those who have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. So actually, this is very, very significant. We have to be in a position where we can hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, especially in the times that we are living out now. Brethren, God is getting ready to pour his Spirit on his church. Who is the church? We are the church. Hallelujah. So we have to have an ear those who have an ear and a spiritual ear just be ready to hear what the spirit of the lord is saying hallelujah so we have to get out too much noise too much noise get the noise out cut down on the television cut down on the radio cut down on the talking on the phone cut out some of the stuff so you can hear what the spirit of the lord is saying you know i, I tell many I, I don't even i don't have to watch the news I don't have to watch the news to know what's going on. It's right there in the word. And the, the, the Lord just gives me the discernment, a spirit of discernment. Because, you know, those who have an ear, let them hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. So I can hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the Holy Spirit speaks to us. No, I did that already. The Holy Spirit gives us supernatural wisdom. The Holy Spirit often gives us supernatural wisdom to speak to people's needs about their circumstances on their intellectual level and understanding. Jesus often spoke to the people during the days of his earthly ministry using everyday things and terms such as sowing, which means planting, and reaping, which means harvesting. Paul on Mars Hill in another example of supernatural wisdom when he began to explain to them about the unknown gods that's in acts 17 16 and 34 so he was explaining to the greek people about their un 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 unknown gods because the greeks had the, all sorts of gods you know their demigods and these gods and that the gods but they had they actually had a structure for an unknown god so they knew that there was a God they couldn't explain and the God and Peter, God gave Peter the wisdom to know that that unknown God was God Almighty. Hallelujah. The God that we serve, the, the Trinity. So he broke it down, Acts 17, 16 and 34. You want to um, read that. Very, very interesting. Okay, so the Holy Spirit reveals things to us. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10 tells us that God through the Holy Spirit reveals things to us. It reads, But it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Hallelujah, Father. Oh, Lord, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Hallelujah. The Spirit searches all things. How did the Spirit know that it was time that I was saved? I was saved at the age of 45 years old, having a rough life. How did he know that I had had enough of hurt and pain? How did he know to pull me out at that time of darkness into the marvelous light? The Holy Spirit knows the deep things and he searches the deep things. The deep things of God and the deep things of the heart and he reveals it to us. Hallelujah. It's like all of Do you know, for 45 years I was going to church. I knew all about baby Jesus and the cross. I knew all about that. But at that opportune time, he pulled me out and my eyes opened. I'm sure you've heard the scales fell off my eyes. Brethren, the scales fell off my eyes. And can I tell you, I have never regretted that day. Yes, I have fallen down. Yes, I have, make a, I have made a couple steps back, but I have gotten up, I've dusted my knees, and I have moved forward, hallelujah, as a new creature in Christ, and I'm well rooted and planted, and no devil in hell will get me off of where I am today. No devil in hell, brethren. No devil in hell. For God I live, and for God I die. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. I don't know where that came from. That must be the Holy Spirit. The things that God reveals to us who Christians... Hold on. The things that God reveals to us through His Spirit, the natural man cannot understand and often thinks it's foolishness. 
That's why certain things like maybe how I'm talking to someone just maybe listen to it and say but that girl's stupid eh You understand but it's foolishness to them But it's, it's actually greater wisdom than the natural mind can grasp Let me tell you it is said that we only use a very tiny percentage of our brain Hallelujah But when we actually get our new um, new bodies Hallelujah our new resurrected bodies, we will be using the full capacity of our brain. Hallelujah. Where we will be just like Jesus in his resurrected body, where Jesus could just disappear. After Jesus went, died and rose again, he just appeared to the disciples, you know, in his resurrected. He came through the wall. You know what I mean? He just came through. You understand? He, he was here on earth, then he went, he was in heaven in the spiritual realm. You could be anywhere at the same time with that new spiritual body. Hallelujah. So, it is greater wisdom and it's wisdom that the natural mind cannot grasp. Do you know that we can be translated after Peter baptized the eunuch, the eunuch in the desert, the Ethiopian eunuch. Do you know that Peter, sorry, Philip, Philip was actually translated. I think he was going to tra- Samaria. He was going somewhere else. How many thousands of miles away? He was actually translated. So after he baptized the eunuch, he would just appeared in another in another city, just like that. It's called translation. The natural mind cannot grasp it. There are people today in our generation that have been translated. There's documentary of where they were in this place right now. They translated in a whole other country. Brethren, the deep things of God. The deep things of God. First Corinthians 2, 6, 10 and 16 says, For example, Noah was told to build an ark. Joseph interprets Pharaoh's dreams to store up food. And Mary was told that she would have a child being still a virgin. These are the deep things of God. How can you comprehend that? How can you comprehend that? Brethren, that's the Holy Spirit. It re- he reveals the deep things of God. All these things seem impossible to the natural mind, but when, but with God, we know that nothing is impossible. You need to understand that when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, that he reveals truth. The Bible says that he shall not speak of himself. John 16, 13 and 14 says, he shall glorify Jesus. So if you are listening to a voice that is glorifying itself, then you should know that it is not the Holy Spirit. So all those me, I and I and me and myself and I, that is not glorifying the Holy Spirit. It's not, uh, sorry, it's not, sorry, you glorify Jesus, but it's not the Holy Spirit that's in them at all. I don't know whose spirit that's in them, but it's certainly not the Holy Spirit. It is not that he cannot receive the glory because he is co-equal with God the Father and God the Son, but rather his purpose at this time is to glorify the Son so that people might believe in his name, Jesus, and be saved. Hallelujah. So how do we get more of the Holy Spirit? Ask, ask, A-S-K, ask, just ask. You just ask, Father, I need the Holy Spirit. I need more of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I want to get baptized in you. You know, Holy Spirit, I want to speak in unknown tongues. That's all you do, ask. So often we look for some kind of mystical way, a super hard way to receive something from God when we should just ask him. Luke 11 says, Luke, sorry, 11 and 13 says, If ye then being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. You know, I look at Christmas. We buy, go and buy all these expensive electronic children, um, electronic gifts for our children. That's so, you know what I mean, rude and naughty and I want, I want, I want, I need, I need, I need. Most children, that's how they are today. Um, so if we, being evil, know how to give good gifts to our children, hear this, how much more shall your heavenly father, your creator, give the Holy Spirit to ask them uh, that, that ask him? You understand? So grieving the Holy Spirit. Can we grieve the Holy Spirit? Yes, we certainly can. We certainly can grieve the Holy Spirit because he's a person and he gets hurt. 
Ephesians 4 and 30 speaks of grieving the Holy Spirit. And you want to take notes. And if you do want to get the scriptures after, you're very welcome to reach out to me. Um, you want to take notes of the scriptures and get into your word. You know, get into your word. And we all like to be spoon fed, but there's no time for drinking milk anymore. Grow up and get into your word. Open your Bibles. So Ephesians 4 and 30 speaks of grieving the Holy Spirit, which is actually hurting the Spirit of God. Ephesians 4 and 30 states, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Quenching the Spirit of God is putting out the Spirit's fire, subduing or suppressing the Holy Spirit. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 19 says, Quench not the Holy Spirit. These scriptures show that we can grieve or quench the Holy Spirit. When we sin continually, we can grieve or even quench the Holy Spirit and he will soon leave us. The Holy Spirit will not hang around sin. He will not make you give up sin if you are not willing. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman and he won't fight with you. If you resist him, he will gently pull back from you. Many people resist the Spirit when they are seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And when they do, they have a problem receiving it. You know, God gave us a free will. God created human beings. And when he created us, he said we were very good. And he created us in his image and likeness. God is three persons in one, and we are three persons in one also. God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One God, three persons. And so the same for us. One human being. Um, one human, but three persons in one. Our, our original self, our original person is a spirit. Margaret Rose is a spirit. The real Margaret Rose is a spirit. And in my spirit, I have a soul, which is my emotions, my suki, my mind. And both of them together are housed in a body this this human form that you see i have here but my real spirit is my real bag the real you is actually a spirit okay and he didn't make us as robots you know do this go here say yes say no no god gave us god designed man with a free will to choose him to love him you understand what I'm saying? And he's not going to force himself on you, brethren. He's not going to force himself on you. You choose evil, you choose evil. That is you. But you can choose good and righteousness, which is God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay. The Spirit of the Lord can come upon you and fill you. And I have a, you know, I'm a testimony. I can testify to that. And many of you can also. But some people want it. I wanted it bad. It's like, how does that happen? How, how, how can they, what are they saying? What language are they speaking? Let me tell you, before I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, my little 12-year-old, my daughter, 12-year-old, at 12 years, she got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I was, and she was innocent. Innocent. And this child got baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. And when you see your child do that in front of you, well, then you know you have to believe. You have to believe, you know. Acts 2 and 3 speaks of this and it reads, And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. Other tongues can be other languages or it could be the heavenly language. There are some people that was what was just speaking in a totally different language. They have no idea. Like they would speak in Spanish and they don't even know how to speak in Spanish. But the Holy Spirit will give them another tongue or German or whatever. Or you speak in a heavenly language. Acts 4 and 31 also speaks of this and it reads, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, I love the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit that's given me a, what you call a, a holy boldness. You know what I mean? When you see you have that Holy Spirit in you, you are so filled, you know, and so filled. 
it's just a feeling that I cannot explain. You know that it's you know when it, when it, when all when it's just good, when everything is good, when it's right, when it's truth, when it's righteous, it's just a it's just a complete feeling of wholeness. So we can get depleted or empty and need to be refilled. You should constantly be refilling. What happens when you become filled with the Holy Spirit? A, your talking will change. Um, your conversation will no longer be self-centered about me and I and I and I, but rather God-centered. It will be difficult to speak poorly of others as well. Anytime I speak poorly, anytime I get into a conversation, because you know there's some people that just love to gossip. There's some people that when as, as soon as you start talking to them, somehow they get you into talking about somebody or something or negative. Right away, I am convicted. I get convicted right away, you know, and I have to repent. So it will be difficult to speak poorly of others as well. Um, cursing. When I used to be in the world, I would drink a lot, and um, once I, once I started drinking, of course, I would be I would curse, you know, and say four letter words and so. Now, when I hear four letter words, I actually cringe. I cringe. I cannot listen to four letter words, you know. B, you will have a new song on the inside, Ephesians 5 and 19. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you just begin to sing about the Lord. But the Holy Spirit presents day, the Holy Spirit presents day purpose. The Holy Spirit, sorry, I keep saying present, but it's present, sorry. The Holy Spirit's present day purpose is to glorify the Son. See, you will start praising God more and giving thanks in all things. I mean, everything I say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I say it without even thinking. D, you will develop a servant's heart and be glad to serve. You will just love to serve the Lord in any capacity. You take on the character of Jesus. Jesus came to serve, you know. So you take on that character of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit's power is most seen when we step out to do the works that we are called to do. It was not until Peter stepped out into the water that he experiences the miracle of wa walking on water. Sickness was not healed until the saints laid their hands on those who were sick and addressed the sickness in some way. The Holy Spirit will move in, in situations and circumstances when we decide to step out and do something. He is not going to show you power of your own purposes. When you step out in God's will, the Holy Ghost will meet you there with the power of necessary, with the with the power necessary to accomplish the task. In 1 Corinthians 2, 4 and 5, Paul was explaining that his words were backed up by the empowering of the Holy Spirit to give proof to what he was saying. We must also have this, but it requires us to have more of the Holy Spirit. How we do, how do we get more? By dying to the flesh on our own desires. We give the Holy Spirit more of ourselves to work with. So the more you want of God, the more he's going to give you. The, the miracles you may be seeking will come through death of your natural or carnal desires. When you die to these things, the Spirit of God comes in and strengthens you with power, which truly brings life. You must die to yourself that much more life might come to you. John 12, 23, 26. That's why the word says we die daily. Every day we have to crucify the flesh. The best way to minister or witness to someone is when you are anointed by the Holy Spirit to do so. He knows things we do not know. He can speak to you the needs and issues of people because he is all-knowing and knows their individual circumstances. You could just meet somebody and the Holy Spirit will minister to you what's going on with the issue with that person without them even have to tell you. So understanding the giving of the fivefold ministry and the gifts of the Spirit. The fivefold ministry are gifts given to people by Jesus Christ, and these people are given to the church, Ephesians 4, 8, and 11. The anointing to fulfill the fivefold ministry is that of the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit are given by the Spirit of God. The fact that I was called to ministry, it was a gift given by the Holy Spirit. I didn't get here on my own. 
these gifts are given based on the Holy Spirit's will or as he decides. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 and 11, some of the ways the Holy Spirit decides who and when to give what gifts might be based on some of these criteria. One, many people want more than they can handle, but he, the Holy Spirit, knows how much as well as what a person can handle. Two, um, people want instant qualifications for ministries, but are unwilling to truly take the time to prepare. So the Holy Spirit knows if we have prepared ourselves by gaining godly character, such as humility and submitting our wills to God, which better qualifies us to walk in the more demonstrative gifts. Three, you can't desire these gifts to do what you want and make yourself a great name. The Holy Spirit knows if a man will be obedient to God with the gifts, as well as if they are mature, if they are mature enough to handle the gifts. Four, he is eternal and can direct us to where the need for the gift that he gives us is most useful. He knows the needs where we where we are in the body of Christ and where we are going. He often strategically places a person somewhere with the giftings necessary to complete his purposes in that particular place at the same proper time. So the gifts that he's given me is not the gifts that he'll give the next person. He's going to use my personality. God created me a certain way. He gave me a different personality. I consider myself fire and that is how I am. And he's given me a, a, whoever, he'll place me where he needs that fire. Somebody else he made cool ice where they're cool and calm but we say we will end up saying the same thing but the holy spirit will decide what office he's given to who or what fivefold ministry is given to who and five he knows the particular call on a person's life and what gifts are needed to fulfill them for me i know that i am called to be an evangelist in the fivefold ministry a teacher definitely um and as you, you you keep going he he expands definitely i'm leading into like the pastoral he's giving me pastoral things you never know the prophetic i have prophesied not a lot of it but it, it's a more and more is coming you just never know what the holy spirit has for you there are many other reasons the spirit of god gives us certain gifts god is looking to raise up a people or a church that are dead to themselves, that he might bring life to and through them in the person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to use many of us, but we resist him by being willful instead of being yielded. But we have to take a stance of being yielded to the Holy Spirit. So that completes the Trinity. And um, the next lesson I am going to move on to will be faith very 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 good teaching faith so thank you for listening um please share the video like and subscribe to the youtube channel and click that bell for notifications god bless you and have a good evening i pray that the that you will not just be a hearer of the word but a doer and you will hide that word in your heart okay take care blessings shalom i love you bless